Hi everyone, C Chronicles here. Welcome and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're a first timer on this channel, I post fragrance related content weekly and consistently. So if that sounds like something that interests you guys, please do consider joining us here by subscribing. I'd very much appreciate it if you became part of the family. And to my returning subscribers, my OGs, thank you so much guys for the continued support. I appreciate you as always. Now welcome to vintage perfumes that I absolutely love. I managed to take uh, 10 to show you here, guys. Being a 1980s baby, I grew up around these scents. These are nostalgic fragrances. These are dated. Uh, some of you guys can call them old-fashioned, but I absolutely love them, guys, because they just take me back to my childhood. So the very first one is going to be Chanel Number no. 5, a 1921 composition. So this is a fragrance that's basically 102 years old. Not this particular one. But I mean, that is Chanel number no. five for you. It is a hundred and two years old. It is a timeless, iconic classic that's mature. It is an aldehydic scent. And uh, you will know that most of the fragrances, you know, that were aldehyde based uh, were a thing those days. Okay. Uh, I have an on and off relationship with it though, I must say. But it is a fragrance that I absolutely need in my collection because I just feel as though my collection wouldn't be complete, guys, without Chanel number no. five. And to top it off, it reminds me so much of my mother because it was her you go to fragrance so on number one guys is going to be the iconic chanel number five. Second on the lineup guys is estee lauder and this is youth due a 1953 composition so this is basically a 70 year old juice this is iconic as well warm spicy woody smoky scent it has cinnamon cloves tons of mixed spices here guys play a key role in this juice it is one of those authentic fragrances that were made with passion where you get a gazillion of notes there very intense and more winter leaning if i must say guys i definitely needed this bottle in my collection because you know it is what it is an oldie and another thing about this fragrance why i say it's very authentic is it is the sort of juice, guys, that a little goes a long way. It was made in, with such passion to an extent that it wasn't, to me, it didn't come across as though these kind of juices were made for profit because two, three sprays on this, that's all you need. Meaning a, one bottle can last you an eternity, if you will. So sitting on number two, guys, is going to be Estee Lauder's Youth Dew. Third on the lineup, guys, is an oldie, but uh, a softie at the same time. Jovan Musk, and this one is for women. Uh, created in 1972, means this fragrance is 51 years old, right? This is a delicate white floral. A softer take on fragrances, especially made a long time ago. You know, I think they had to throw in something there that was less polarizing. And that is what you're going to get from this fragrance. It is an easy, rich, fresh scent. And the good thing about it is it's very much on the affordable side i mean based on my number one and number two you know that uh, chanel number five would be the more pricier one and this one is not so much on the affordable side this youth too but this you can get guys for a song and it pairs well with a lot of modern fragrances making this one an ideal layering scent so sitting on our number three guys is jovan musk for women fourth on the lineup guys is vanderbilt by Gloria Vanderbilt. This is a 1982 composition, guys, making this one a 41-year-old juice. This is a semi-sweet, spicy, aldehydic scent. Now, in as much as it does have aldehydes, this is not as uh, polarizing, maybe, as Chanel Number no. 5. But it will give you that nostalgic, minty, mature kind of vibe to it. What I love about this one is it has like a vivid carnation note. For some, it might be a hate, but for me, it is a note that I completely enjoy. And this carnation is swimming in like a shampooy background. So if it's something that is up your alley, you may want to try this one. Another one that is affordable, guys. A stunning, classic, comforting scent that I've been wearing mostly at bedtime because this one, the performance is not that great. But I love it nonetheless. That is why it is here. Vanderbilt by Gloria Vanderbilt. Next up is Kelvin Klein's Obsession, a composition from 1985, meaning it is a 37-year-old juice. This is a fragrance that most likely a lot of people will be familiar with. Why? Because it stretched, guys, all through the 90s, even to the 2000s, this particular juice. It's woodsy, it's spicy, embery, animalic, smoky as well. 
I love the fact that it is unisex. So in as much as it's marketed for women, it does have like a unisex appeal to it there. It is a unique fragrance, guys. If you went into the mall, um, you might possibly not find somebody smelling of Vanderbilt, but there's a chance that you may find at least one person there, you know, during your shopping or something that might be smelling of obsession. So it's a Vinti that is uh, still present today, polarizing though, making this one a bit ideal for winter or at least one that you need to be careful on the sprays. Sitting on number five is CK, Obsession for Women. On number six, guys, is a 35-year-old juice. Elizabeth Taylor's Passion was uh, composed in 1988. This is a powerhouse perfume, guys, not for those who like light fragrances. Another one that has tons of notes. It interprets into an animalic, woody, powdery, smoky, spicy, aldehydic scent again, an intoxicating one. This, I would say, would absolutely suit winter. This, unless you like very strong fragrances, you may wear all year round but it is a fragrance that wears you so you might want to do this one in cold weather because it does project guys literally to the next town this reminds me of you know those days growing up as a kid watching dynasty falcon crest that sort of thing pamela anderson you know those sort of stars so this has kind of like a, ho a hollywood appeal to me if you will and it's sitting on our number six guys a little bit taylor's passion on our number seven is this 33-year-old Vinti, right? This is a 1990 composition, Shalimar EDP. I mean, if you're like me and you love these oldies, you need this in your collection. I just love the bottle, guys. It takes me to, you know, uh, that, again, old-style glam. It just looks nice on the dresser. It has a citrusy top there mixing with florals in the mid and a leathery, incense creamy finish. It is a complex fragrance to describe and one that I would say is either you love this or you just can't stand it. It is one of those fragrances, guys. For me, it's a love. And in fact, I think I'm going to add a few more Shalimas in my collection because this one really does it for me. So in as much as it's old fashioned, it does have a versatility to it. This one does not demand to be worn only in cold weather. I can wear this all year round. So that's another plus for this particular one, guys. A Shalimar by Ghislaine and this is the EDP. Eighth on this list, guys, is Chopard and this one is a cashmere. This is a 1992 composition. It is your vanilla forward fragrance, a sweet, spicy and fruity as well. Expect a lot of fruitiness from this fragrance. I get mango, especially in as much as it has those other tons of fruits that are working to make the composition what it is. The only thing that I would say is a con for this fragrance, guys, is a synthetic plasticky thing there that some people might not like that much. However, it feels very unique to the nose and Exotic. This doesn't share the uniform old-fashioned feel. It kind of is in the middle there. It just gives me a mature fragrance without necessarily feeling, you know, old-fashioned, that sort of thing. It also reminds me of, say, a rich auntie. You know, if you have that rich auntie that's always wearing heavy uh, jewelry and smells of heavy perfumes, and lots of accessories on their arms and the rings and stuff, that is what this fragrance reminds me of, guys. Another staple in my collection, sitting on number eight, is Chopin. Casimir. On our number nine is our 32 year old composition from Mugland. This is Angel, the original Angel, guys. This was composed in 1992. So, 1992, you know, brings an era where fragrances are starting to get a little funkier, and that is what I get from this fragrance. This I will not put it dated or anything. It is a release, you know, that is kind of relatable even till this day. However, it is an either love or hate for some people because some people find it just too sweet, too overpowering, too cloying. Another one that lasts a great while. Another one that has tons of ingredients. So this guy's Angel by Mugler is your caramel chocolate honeyed scent with tons of fruits and florals. It also has that cotton candy to top it off, which is something that, you know, like I said, some people find too cloying but i personally don't mind this one guys i added this to my collection because it's a vinti that has that modern appeal an edgy composition sitting on our number nine guys is moogler's 
angel. Our number 10 and the last one is going to be this 25-year-old juice. This is Elizabeth Arden's Splendor, composed in 1998. A gorgeous, fresh, spicy, soft, floral. Everything in this fragrance, guys, is delicate. Another fragrance that I always have in my collection, including backups. First reason being it is affordable. Second reason being it is just signature scent worthy and an easy, dumb, rich. So if you're looking for a fragrance there that is going to give you uh, light florals, a feminine feel all round, this is a perfect, you know, fragrance for you. Splendor by Elizabeth Arden. This doesn't feel old-fashioned it just feels mature it is timeless it is versatile and suits all occasions nothing in here is cloying or polarizing or anything like that so it just is 25 years old because it's 25 years years old but it doesn't give me vinty vibes at all and it's sitting guys on our number 10. So that's a wrap guys those were 10 vinty you can call them old-fashioned you can call them nostalgic fragrances within my collection that i just bought to share with you here if you like myself that is still in love with you know fragrances like a ganza those fragrances that we used to wear a long time ago poem you know let me know in the comment section guys because yes i know the fragrance industry has evolved a lot uh niche fragrances being introduced there and all but there are some oldies guys that i feel will still complete a collection and these are some of the ones that i do have here c chronicles is my name thank you so much guys for joining me today uh let's meet in the comment section where we obviously discuss more about fragrances an important question as usual is have you subscribed if not guys then why not please do consider subscribing and joining the family also like and share this video and remember that smelling good is a form of good manners Cheers.